Hello, and welcome to the inaugural episode of Make Em Watch It. I'm your host, Jake Berlin. Um, I am joined today by my fellow table members, Jacob Barley <laughs> and Gio Ramos. Jacob, how's it going, man? Going great, man. I'm excited to talk to start this new, you know, little show we got going on. It's yeah. interesting. It's going to be fun. I, I really like this idea. Uh, Gio? I'm happy to say that I finally watched Goodfellas, so you can use that one on <laughs> well, there's there's one that I that's one I haven't seen. So uh, obviously, it's a brand new show for here, here at Apocalypse or Apocaflix, excuse me. <laughs> and um, so this is how it works. You know, obviously, we're not able to catch every movie uh, every year, especially in the past. And so we thought of a cool idea where one of us at the table will challenge one of us others and make a watch a movie uh, throughout the week before we start the episode the following week. And uh, you know, it could be from. Uh, from past, you know, the 80s, 90s, whatever it is. Uh, it can be from the present, a movie we haven't caught in the last few months. Um, this week was uh, Gio's turn to challenge someone at the table, so I'm going to hand it off to him, and he's going to uh, let um, the viewers know who he challenged and what movie uh, he challenged them with. All right, so for the first challenge, I chose uh, Jacob Barley, and I wanted him to watch Tron Legacy. Tron Legacy is a sequel to the 1983, is it 1982 uh, movie. Um, this one starred Jeff Bridges, uh, Garrett Hedlund, and uh, Olivia Wilde. Uh, music by Daft Punk. It was, it was one of those movies where you had to watch it in a theater to really get that full, you know, visual experience. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Now, <laughs> Thanks. Now, <laughs> I gave Jacob the Blu-ray edition, and hopefully that, you know, uh, the visuals were just as impressive for him. So why don't you talk about Tron Legacy and how you thought about it? So, yeah, Gio gave me the Blu-ray, like, on Monday or Tuesday earlier this week, and I kind of waited till the last minute. I'm not going to lie. I watched it this morning. Really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. I, okay. I set an alarm for, like, 6.50 in the morning. I woke up. Because I knew I had to be here at like 10, 1030 to start the podcast. Um, so I woke up at 7 and I started it. And I got to say, I really enjoyed it. You know, yes! I enjoyed it. And here's the thing. It's not a great movie. I wouldn't say that. As, as far as story and narrative and characters, it's not great in that sense. But as far as entertainment, visually, and just, you know, it just. It's such a cool looking movie and a cool feeling movie and Jeff Bridges was great. I actually it's weird because you know Garrett Hedlund, I only seen him in like I saw him in, in Troy for, he's paid Patroclus. He was in Four Brothers, which I didn't realize that until I looked up his IMDB. He's the younger brother. Um and this movie actually made me really like him as an actor. I was like, wow. And I even told Jake, I was like, why not Garrett is it Headley or Headland? Headland. Headland for Han Solo. I mean, I could see that. It depends. If they're going for a Han Solo closer to Harrison Ford's age when he started playing Han Solo, I think he would actually do a really good job. But, yeah, I I did not know what to think going into this movie because I hadn't seen the original. And I always hear people talk about the soundtrack of the film. And the music is great. It's freaking awesome. You could, like, dance during this whole movie if you wanted to because the music is just I have it on my awesome. I have it on my car. It's amazing. Yeah, like, you could play this this soundtrack in a club, if you, you know, speed up some of the songs. But, um, yeah, you got to talk about the visuals. Like, I've never seen a movie that takes place in a digital world, like, for most of the time. And, you know, it's – well, I said that, you know, it lacks maybe some story and characters. It was – it had some nice moments. It had the father-son relationship and, um, st and stuff like that. Um, but, yeah, I just – yeah, so overall, I really liked it. You know, I would have, you know, I would have probably liked to see a little more depth to it because, you know, other than the father-son connection, you know, and and stuff like that, they didn't really deliver as far as making me care that much about the story and the characters. So if I had to choose some negatives, that would be it. But boy, do I wish I would have watched this movie in theaters, man, because this is one of those, you know, visual spectacles that you have to see. Like, and it, you know, I know they were talking about doing another one, but this one didn't do that great at the box office. So um, hopefully they can get that done because the way the movie ends, you can yep. do some very yep. interesting. I love the way it ends. And, you know, I don't want to spoil it or anything, but, you know. The movie came out like a decade ago. Yeah, so you're okay. but, <laughs> you know, well, it's, 
the one thing that I love is the con because so I don't I haven't seen the original so maybe this was in the original but I love the concept of you know the users are humans right or you know yes and the users and then the the programs are the the people that exist in this world so they're not actually you know real people yep so um I love that dynamic it was you know kind of like uh I don't know what to compare it to, but it was really cool. Like they're like, "Oh, he's the user." Like, and you know, they think negatively of users. Um, and I love how Jeff Bridges' characters created this guy Clue. Mm-hmm. Clue, right? That's his yeah, name. Clue, yeah. yeah. And then, so I'm curious to ask you guys because I was watching it, and th- so who is Tron, and what did you go bad in this movie? Tron is is the game version of his partner Alan in real life. Oh, okay. And he's like, oh. and he's, he's, so they created Clue, which is Jeff Bridges. Okay. And then uh, Tron is Alan's version. Okay. And, and um, he was supposed to die, but he's, he was uh, turned. And then, by Clue? Yeah, and then all that stuff went down. So. Yeah, I will say, I thought it was interesting. Like, Clue kind of looked at, you know, Jeff Bridges' character as kind of like his creator, mm-hmm. you know? And he was like, they had like a flat. They had like flashbacks of you know him showing him when he, they first met, and like you, it seemed like he cared about him. like Clue was like hurt in some way, and I mean that would be. Re- I know I don't want to spoil it too much, but like it would be really interesting to see like what if they actually got out into the real world, like do that in the third movie, please have them come to Earth, and I want to see a war or something between you know the the programs and our earth-based armies and stuff like that and maybe by the time the the sequel comes around in in the timeline in the movie you know garrett headland's character has like create created a defense for if that ever does come to fruition so i overall very interesting film you know i didn't love it but i really liked it so yeah i, I enjoyed it i'm and thank you for making me watch it geo yeah you're welcome man. yeah i'm i'm so happy that you love it because i enjoy the living hell out of the movie mm-hmm. like i love it yeah it's just so cool it's just it, that's a perfect word. It's so cool to watch, yeah. you know. And I mean, do you guys agree that it's not the greatest story? Yes. Like there's there's missed character opportunities and story opportunities yeah. for sure, but um, it's just it's so much fun. Like you said, it's yeah, so and cool. The action is awesome. And, I love know, the fights. Like I don't know if you guys remember when it, but when it was first announced. I remember if and if you haven't seen it, go back and watch it. But the teaser trailer for it, I remember. I was fle- mm-hmm. freaking blown away by it. It was the the light cycles. Oh, okay. And they were racing, and it was just like for thirty oh, that, seconds. That sequence was awesome. It was unbelievable. Yeah, and, that um, the the motorcycle sequence yeah, was awesome. The, the light cycles and and you know the flying with the what's up uh, with those swords, man? They look like lightsabers. I know, right? <laughs> they totally look like. I was it's like, really wow, cool, that's, the whole those concept are is so cool and. Uh, I really want them, and like when they announced the third one last year, and before they pulled it, I was so excited for when it, it was going to happen because yeah. the, the director was coming back, uh, Garrett Helen was coming back, Olivia Wilde was coming back. It's like it was so it was so ready to go, and then they pulled it. I was just like so let down. All right, so before watching this movie, I didn't really care about Tron or the possibility of them doing a sequel, but now I really want to see it because I want to see how Olivia Wilde's character adapts to living in the real world. And then I do want to see, you know, even though I love the, the visuals of the digital world, I want to see what happens when, you know, somebody who wants to cause harm gets out of, what do they call it? The, um, the grid. The, the grid, grid yeah, and comes yeah. to the real world. So it'll be really interesting. I'm, I hope they do make a sequel now. I hope they do too, but the, this is the problem. It didn't do good at the box office, which sucks. Yeah, yeah that's um, true. They, I forget. They have a script. Uh, the director is supposed to be titled Tron Ascension. Yeah. But I think it was the failure of Tomorrowland that kind of pulled the plug on the Tron. Original, like original. Yeah, the original kind of like yeah. comic book yeah. and stuff mm-hmm. like that. That's the time that you're right. That's kind of the time that it was announced and then pulled. And I'm also itself. interested to go watch the original because I know the visual <laughs> specs aren't going to be up to date, but I want I'm curious because I want to learn more about this world and it's a direct sequel. Like it's not a reboot. It's, it's not super a- gamey. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like a. Uh, God, what's that movie called? You guys have seen it? Yeah, I've seen it, yeah. It's super gamey. There's a movie that was made back then that kind of had the same flair. Um, uh, well, it sounds cool. Yeah. Forced to participate in gladiatorial games or his only chance It's to basically that game. light cycle scene. It's like an, like an expansion of that. There's a lot yeah, of that and in it. I love the first fight he gets into when they're throwing the discs. Yeah. And like, the way he defeats him, he cracks the floor and the guy falls. Mm-hmm. Like that. 
the action and the visuals were just great. So that's what I took away from this movie. Yeah, very enjoyable. Awesome. Well, yeah, I mean, that's kind of uh, kind of how that's going to happen. Uh, make them watch it. Um, and, you know, now that Jacob has seen Tron Legacy and reviewed it, it's now his turn to uh, dub the next person and let them know uh, what they have to watch this week. And we'll be back, we'll be back next week uh, with another Make Them Watch a Review. So without further ado, Jacob, what do you got, man? Well, I thought a lot about this. I wasn't sure who I was going to choose. And I had different movies in mind for each of you. Um, but Gio did a little bit of foreshadowing earlier in this podcast because I'm actually choosing Jake Berlin. <laughs> and I am making him finally watch Goodfellas right. for the first time. I have the DVD in my hand. Sorry, it's not a Blu-ray. No, but don't worry there about you go. It. You don't have to go looking for it. So Jake Berlin is finally going to watch Goodfellas. And he's not a huge fan of mob movies. I'm not. But I don't think you have to be a fan of mob movies to appreciate this film. There's some great performances, and it's actually – the story is told very well. So I'm curious to see what you feel about Goodfellas. Jake, how are you feeling now well, knowing that you have to watch Goodfellas? We, we, we talked about this last week, and I had said that you know I've been wanting to watch it because I haven't seen it. Yeah, but I just never got classic, around to it. And, you know, Martin you know, Scorsese. Yeah, you know? now now I finally have to watch it. And That's like the you point said, of this show. Yeah, and uh, uh, I'm not the biggest fan of mob movies like you said. And so, yeah, I'm definitely – I'm looking forward to watching it. It's also Joe Pesci's uh, Academy Award. Well, I heard that it's, it's the best Ray Liotta's ever been. So. Oh, yeah. definitely. For so, sure. yeah, I'm yeah. definitely looking forward to watching it. So. Yeah, Joe Pesci's amazing. Good stuff, man. Yeah. All right, All well, right. I'm looking forward to reviewing you next week. So. Cool. Cool, that's going to wrap up our first episode of Make Them Watch It. Um, before we go, I'd like to thank both Jacob and Gio for uh, joining us today. And Jacob, where can they find you online? You can find me on Twitter at Jacob Bartley underscore. And come on, make a Tron legacy sequel. Gio? You guys can find me on Twitter at GeoRambos24 and ApocalypseMovies.com. Yeah, um, and me, uh, Twitter, Instagram at Qui-Gon Jake. Uh, make sure you check out everything we're doing on Apocalypse Movies. Uh, hit that subscribe button, hit share. Um, we're doing a lot of cool, cool things over here. Um, and I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for joining us.